The research described in the Nature article was conducted by a team headed by Dr. Brian Kabilka at Stanford University School of Medicine and involved several groups in the US, in Germany, and ourselves here at TCD. The objective of the work is to understand the molecular details of signal communication in biological systems. This work focused on the beta-2 adrenergic receptor, which communicates the presence of the hormone adrenaline and is an important drug target. What we established in this work was the molecular structure of the receptor with an adrenaline-like molecule bound to the protein, which tells us what the active form of the protein might look like. This information gives us clues as to how the protein works to communicate a signal from one compartment to another. It could potentially be used for the development of new drugs and the optimization of existing medicines. Remember that the objective of the work is to determine the three-dimensional structure of the receptor. For that we need to do macromolecular crystallography, for which we need crystals of the receptor. The work that was done here in my lab at TCD involved several steps that were part of a bigger pipeline that leads from pure protein on one end to a solved structure on the other. Our part in the process was to produce crystals and to collect diffraction data on the crystals at a synchrotron. The pipeline started at Stanford where the protein was produced, purified, medicated, and then express mailed to us here in Dublin. This is where Joe Lyons and David Aragao in my lab went to work. Joe began by reconstituting the protein into what is called a liquid crystalline membrane, also called a mesophase. The mesophase is extremely sticky and viscous, and a special robot built in my lab is used to dispense nanoliter volumes of it onto glass plates where crystallization trials are performed. Thousands of conditions must be examined to find the right one that gives us quality crystals. The crystals are extremely fragile and really small, just a tenth to a hundredth of a millimeter in size, and harvesting them takes a lot of skill and patience and a very steady hand, and this is where David gets involved. Using a microscope and a glass cutter, he carefully opens the well, teases apart the viscous mesophase, and exposes a crystal. He then picks it up in a mic micrometer-sized loop and plunges the crystal into liquid nitrogen. The cryocooled crystals are shipped in special dewars or thermos flasks to Chicago and onto the advanced photon source at the Argonne National Labs, which houses the synchrotron we use for X-ray diffraction data collection. David and Joe then follow the crystals to the synchrotron, where they position the tiny crystals in an equally tiny synchrotron X-ray beam where the data is collected. The data was processed at Stanford and the structure was solved. It's only then, with that structure in hand, that the story begins where the structure is examined for clues as to how the protein works to bind ligands and drugs and to transduce the signal for action inside the cell.